Hey friends, so I'm going to work on my reverse osmosis deionization system that supports my fish tank that I should have installed years ago and just haven't gotten around back to putting it back together. Anyway, um, last time I worked on this, I'm relocating the roadie system outside where it's easy to service and it's okay if it drains here, but I don't have power and I don't have water on this wall. and. Right now, I don't think I'm going to run another circuit for this. What I think I'm going to do is run a piece of conduit up through the, uh, the space up there and bring it in over here. Um, and then I may just mount the pump in here where it's safe, but I, I'd actually like to get the pump outside because this has a tendency to leak. And um, yeah, so that's today's project so it's been decommissioned for several months the pump has been bad since i put this back up so i'm gonna take the pump down and i'm gonna get busy on this so let's let's get started let me see if i can find a place to put the camera where you guys can see i guess this will work what's the view look like yeah that works all right let me go get my uh, drill so first things first we need to um, disconnect this so let's start by the way these work is you push in on it and then you pull. So we're going to fully disconnect this. This blue is treated water. That's what that tells me. Red is untreated water. Sometimes these can be a little tough to work on, but they're generally pretty reliable. So let's decommission this whole thing. And um, this pump is dead, so we're gonna make short work out of the decommissioning process with a pair of wire nippers. Of course, we've gotta find the wire nippers first, and, ah, oh, there they are. All right, so again, dead is dead, so we can't break dead, so we're just gonna cut it. That, that disconnects that problem for us for now. And then, down here, um, you know, this is a mess, but we'll come back to that later. So let's get this pump out of here because that's really where we started. So I've just screwed it into the wall and that's not really a huge challenge to get it out of here, except that I need some extensions in order to be able to get in here with the drill. And the best thing about these SPAC screws is generally they're reusable, unless you've done something stupid like put them into concrete. Yeah, it's, it's kind of unfortunate that uh, Aquatech does not make a rebuild kit for this because I'm pretty sure it's just the diaphragm wore out. Uh, this pump is pretty widely used in RO systems. It comes with uh, built-in push connect uh, connectors. And you know, that's a nice mount. It's just, it's really just a tragedy that this is not rebuildable. Put these screws back. All right. Um, you know, it looks like I've got the bit on here, so let's just take it apart. I mean, One of the things I always like to say is dead is dead. And you can't break dead, but sometimes you can fix it. So there you have it. The rubber bit is just deteriorated and 
coming apart in pieces, and that's actually probably all that's wrong with it um, is that the valves have just worn out from age. Um, and again, I'm just curious what makes this thing tick because it's been it's been an unusually good pump. So we're going to go ahead and destructively open it. Wow, that's a really nice bearing on the inside of this. And so it's a nice motor. Hmm. Temptations. I don't really see what the mechanism is that makes it work. Because um, well, maybe there's something in here. Nope, those are just valves. I mean, and again, I promise you, this is what's worn out in this pump. Um, that's a nice motor. What is it? 24 volt? Yeah, 24 volts, bad news. completely not necessary to throw any of this in the recycling, but I feel better for having done it. So, I am. Um, yeah, I, I'm not, I guess these valves, or these are valves, I, I don't fully understand what makes this work. Other than I guess this must be. Oh yeah, it's an off centric. It's an it's an off center eccentric, so it just rotates around and that changes. Um, so that's that's how this pump works. I don't see what's holding it in. It's a really nice. It's a it's a great design. It's really well engineered. Um, I have no idea what the hell's holding it in here. I know this isn't what you guys are signed up for, but all right, we're gonna give up on this and throw the whole thing away. Um, let me, I'll be right back. Okay, so now we've gotta extract the uh, plumbing from this location, because it really doesn't need to be in here. So I'm gonna work on that. Um, I don't see anything, I don't really see a good place to put the camera, so you guys are just gonna have to work with that for the moment. And we're gonna go ahead and take this apart. Again, push down with both fingernails. Depressurize your system before you release the pressure. So let me go depressurize it because there's still a pressure tank in the house. Okay, maybe it is, let's see if we've got water here or not. Nope, no water, so that means we're fully discharged so we can disconnect that. So I need to go ahead and disconnect this anyway. Oh wow, I soldered it. Man, did I really? No, I just wrapped it. I was gonna say that would be, I would be surprised if I went to the trouble to solder this connection. Um, I've had a lot of problems with these valves, not gonna lie. The idea was to remove the pressure when there wasn't a need for reverse osmosis. 
Um, when I start running my fish tank, I run into issues with uh, just water waste. And so I've been trying to uh, minimize water waste because, well, in Houston, water used to be cheap, but it is not cheap anymore. Not in the least, not in a bit. I had a $500 water bill last month. So I need to cut those off. And uh, let me see if I can find the pliers that I like to use for that. These might do it. I don't think they will, but they might. And if not, I'll just break it off. So let me get you guys closer to the action here. What I want to do is I want to pull this line out. Now this line's under pressure, so let me not do something stupid. Let me cut the water off in here and drain it. I have uh, service valves in different parts of the house so I can disable water in some places and not others. Now, as you watch this, you may be beginning to think, wow, this is turning into a major project, and you would be right. And that would be why this hasn't gotten done. So in order to successfully undo this, you basically have to break the, um, the clip. And there's a couple ways to do it. Um, so that's one. Another way is you can get a screwdriver behind here and you can just simply pop this Oedeker clamp. This is called an Oedeker clamp. I guess that's the guy who invented it. Try not to stab yourself. Everything in the house likes blood. So those are my sense wires for my solar. They're wanting in on the action. So I am rotating the other side of this to try and get at it a little better. Um, you know, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this off and I'll, I'll fight with it down here on the table. All right, so as promised, I said I would fight with it down here. So I want to save the valve. Um, and to do that, I need to get this off. So there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, what I'm about to do is not really the right way. Let me see if I can find the cutters that will cut that without damaging the cutters. Um, see them. You know what? Uh, these are cheap enough that I can sacrifice these. I don't want to destroy my good cutters because these are stainless steel bands. Um, well, let me just rip it apart. I thought I had 
add something special for this. Well, these might do it. These are for breaking um, the copper ones. And what they lack in appearance, they make up for in tenacity. There is a cutter that's specifically for this. I don't own it, as you can tell by now. And it's generally not a big deal. I don't remove very many of these. But sometimes I want to save something like a valve because it's expensive. So there's a couple different ways to get these off and you're about to see the easier of the ways. Um, PEX is pretty heat tolerant. And it will actually shrink back to its size if you heat it up. come apart in little pieces. There we go. So that saves the valve. Um, you know, that little bit of heat didn't, didn't do anything to the seals in the valve. Um, got a few things here. Okay, so I'm going to put a couple pipe clamps in and uh, just secure this a little better. I'm not done with this by any stretch of the imagination, but this is where I want it. Oh, man, this is, this is gonna fight with me. So now the catch is not to hurt myself. Or destroy anything. doesn't help that it's petrified wood, but that'll work. Okay, now I need to figure out how long my run is, and this simple Harbor Freight tape measure will do the trick. So it looks like it's about seven feet. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Oh, well, not with that bit, I'm not. I don't remember where these handy little shelves came from. But uh, actually, I think there's something used for uh, telecom. but they're nice little shelves. I'm gonna keep it, I just don't need it there. And that's the story of why everything's a mess around here. 
So I'm trying to undo some of the sins in this wall cavity so that I can get it insulated and closed. Um, so I need to drill a hole in that ceiling and I'm gonna intentionally make it too big because remember, I have to get a pipe through it. And it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be the simplest of things to get a pipe through, so yeah. So I believe there's a joist right there, but I wanna check it and I'm gonna use my Bosch GMS120 scanner to check. Uh, if you're curious about this scanner, I have a video on it. work on this one. All right, well, so much for that. It doesn't work on here. And I believe right there is where it needs to go through. So that's where it's gonna go. This poor DeWalt drill is on its last legs. I really want it right there, so that's where I'm gonna put it. There's not much there. These are real, real thin, so it doesn't take much to blow through it. Just covers me with dust, which I would prefer not to be dusty and sweaty. So we'll do a little test fit here and see what this looks like. So I think we'll be good. That's what we want. Now, when, ah, uh, there you guys are. When I connect the pipe, I wanna keep in mind which way I'm going to push because otherwise it's going to be a pain in the ass because I gotta fish a wire and four pieces of tubing through here. Yeah, so you gotta think that through. So you wanna go in so that you pick up the smooth part of the hole. Um, let me get this set up. So they were out of the gray cement. All they had was clear, and it will do the job if I can get it open. Well, that's not gonna work. But these big vice grip Irwin ones will, and they do. All right, where's the other piece? So you don't need a I mean, they'll tell you you should use primer. All it does is makes the bond stronger, but you don't need a whole lot on um, electrical conduit. It's not like if there is some kind of small air leak, it's gonna be a big deal. It's not. Now, the downside is this glue takes time to dry, but that's okay, we've got time. So now let's fish it through there. So one of the things I'm doing to make this um, easier to find is I'm put, I'm shining a flashlight at it and um, that's going to make it easier to fish this through here. And I, I don't know if there's a nice way or anything exciting for y'all to see, but I'm going to set the camera up so that you can watch me struggle with this pipe. And for our first rodeo trick, we'll knock everything over, or try. So we don't actually need to be all the way up in there.
But we probably do need the headlamp so we can at least see what the hell's going on. And in Unsafe Work Practices 101, there we go. So we've got it in there. And again, that's part of the reason that I made the hole larger than it needed to be, is because it would simplify finding it and dropping it in. Now, I wanted to come down a little bit, so I'm gonna recycle the pipe on the other end and glue it up in order to do that. So I think this is a bit much for this, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna give it a shot. Yeah, that is too much. I, let me see if I can find, over the years I've owned so many ratchet cutters and I just have no idea where the hell they're all at. is I have no earthly idea so I'm going to make do with a sawzall and again this is not water pipe this is just you know it's it's I'm really using it for conduit so I am going to use a metal blade because I have one if you don't have a metal blade don't worry about it it's really not a big deal let's get you guys up here where you can see I knew that was headed down there at some point. We'll eventually knock everything off that table and onto the floor. As promised, it's off. That's all we were aiming for. Doesn't have to be pretty. Anyone that looks at it that closely can start working on something else around here. Now, I do like to come back, and this is just a personal thing to deflash and deblur, but that's not even strictly necessary. Um, I am gonna see if I have any clamps, because I normally have that type just hanging around here. Let me go look in the shed because it might be in there. Before we do that, I'm gonna glue this up. And I think you guys are gonna perch here. I swear they ought to sell this stuff in single use packets because it, it honestly doesn't get used. I end up throwing away most of uh, a can of glue. And it just is what it is. And unfortunately, some little spiders have decided to set up shop and they're not gonna like me because I'm going to treat this with web out. I don't like spiders and yeah. All right, let me go look for those uh, um, hold downs. I'll be right back. All right, next I need to fish the uh, tubes and the wire through there. So I'm gonna set this from the inside because I think it's easier to pull that way. So uh, let me go in there and get this set.
All right, that's more than enough. So we'll pull some of that back. So the other question I have to decide is where I want to start. Yeah, I, I, you know what? This is this is fine. We'll we'll mount the pump down here. Actually, you know, the pump should be up there. So I need to retract this and I need to cut this off about right there. So let's do that. Now, this is a 60 watt pump. Double check the numbers. Uh, there's the inlets. Twenty-four volts. Let's see. Doesn't say. Mm. It doesn't say. Which is really kind of annoying because you need to know. 24 volts AC. I'll just go look it up. I'll be right back. So I've got several colors of tubing that I need to pull. And they are color coded to me. The, and I'm using quarter inch tubing. I realize I'm off camera at the moment. But this is waste, water supply, DI. Well, actually, this is water supply. This is reverse osmosis, reverse osmosis with deionized and waste. And then the pump uses 30 watts, so it, it just flat doesn't matter. And any electrical tape that you have handy is sufficient for this purpose. So first we're gonna bundle the, t the what we wanna pull. This is an easy one, this is only um, like 12 feet or something. So this will be very easy and I'll end up just cutting the whole thing off and being done with it. I'll sacrifice a few inches. Now you do want to sort of make a nose cone on this. Uh, it will simplify your life when it comes to pulling this through. So, and then I also, and again, I'm just being anal with these little things. So then at this point, I'm gonna stuff that up in there that'll that'll just kind of hold it still and I'm gonna go in and pull it from the other side I guess I can that should be good possibly you all see nothing but again this is such a short pull um, but it's important to watch it, and if you have it start to loop like that, you want to you want to go ahead and untangle that so you don't have any problems. And 
and here we are almost done. The only issue here is um, I've got a lot more black on this end, so I'll have to deal with that because the black has to go somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to reverse this. So um, there's nothing wrong with my pole, but I want it to go the other way because I want, I want everything to end out here. Um, it, it'll save me hassle later. a knife out here somewhere. I just don't know where it's at. So in this case, I'm just going to retract it. And all I did is trim the fish stick off and then I'm going to drag all this inside. And then this is a pretty straightforward process to reverse. I just run the fish tape back from this side. First, I'm gonna take a little revenge on the spider that set up shop here that I... And again, this is only like a, a little baby pole of, you know, eight or 10 feet. So it's really not a big deal. So let's go inside. You guys can watch it from the other side. The challenge in here is just not getting hung up in all the chat junk that's in here, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. So just start it and then, you know, sometimes you don't need as much um, lead on this, but I, I just, I'm used to pulling communications cables and I'm used to pulling long distances and they very easily get stuck. In fact, a lot of times you don't even pull with the, with what you're actually trying to install. You pull a rope and then you use the rope. Always a good idea to hand start it so that it doesn't hang up. Uh, a second person is tremendously helpful but this is such a short pull, it's not a big deal. Okay. So, that's all we needed to do, and that's about the right length on this end, so I'm real happy with that. And uh, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make exceptionally short work out of this out here because it's just easier this way. So when I say exceptionally short work, let me just clamp this. I'm at exceptionally short work. And then you slice open the electrical tape and you can cut against the fish tape for you know, you don't put a lot of pressure on there, but you don't need to. And then you wind the fish tape up and hide it somewhere for future use.
All right. There are actually tubing cutters for this kind of tube. And what we want to do at this point is just go ahead and make use of them. They're not very much. They're a couple dollars are worth it. So this is deionized water that's coming back. And then this is, uh, normally we do a tap here. So we're missing, uh, we're missing a bunch of stuff. All right, let me go find the deionizing or the RO filters. So I've got my RO filters. They've been out for a while. It's not a big deal. Uh, I'm gonna grab my ladder. So what we need to do is snap these in. Let me see if I can find a place up here for you guys. All right, so these need to be snapped in. And then I gotta remember how they went together. Yeah, I think it was like this. Oh, doggy. All right, so it has to be like this. Yep, because that's our, that's our first in the train. Now, the bad thing about the way this is hooked up is I can't really see so I've got a revalve in here and I don't, I can't really see how the valve is set up. So I'm gonna have to think through this. In and out. What is this? So I think, Yeah, I'm going to have to go look it up because it's been that long since I've taken it apart now. So this side goes to... Uh, pretty sure... That's, out, that's the waste output. So that's the waste output. And this will go to the black. And we'll trim it because we don't need quite this much in here. And then we'll plug that in there. So this waste output needs to loop back to that input for the second pass. Let me see if I have a piece hiding over here. Yeah, let me go check the documentation. I'll be right back. Okay, so what should be happening, and we gotta turn this again to look at it. Yeah, so that's in, out to the reservoir. So that's coming from our filter. And then these lines, see what this is. So these are our product lines. So this is supposed to go in here. And then this one comes over and goes in here. And 
then the product water comes out this side. Now, product water in this system doesn't work probably the way you think it does. It does and it doesn't. So product water comes out this end. So we're gonna, and I, I'll just flip this around so you can see. So we go into here, and this is an auto shutoff valve. I'm not 100% sure it works right, but that's what it is, and that's where it goes. And then this just snaps into here, and that keeps it nice and clean. So now we have a split. So one side is product water going to the house, and the other side is deionizing water, which goes down here. And so I, I have my deionizing hooked in with, and actually I want to disconnect this side. Remember, always push down with both fingernails and then you can pull it out. I want to tuck this up in here so it's out of the way. All right, this gives me the ability to shut off the deionizing water. Like right now I'm not using it, um, so I don't need it. And uh, for anything going to the tank, it needs to go through DI. Um, that's in, and then I have another valve in the back, which is, which is for water going in, and that's going to come from the pump, so you guys can't see that. So there's another valve here that turns on and turns off the whole system. All right, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire in or plumb in the product water for the house. And again, I'm going to use my little tubing cutter. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to pop that. This tubing cutter is it's a nice accessory to have if you have a bulk reef, if you have a system with a reef, you really need one of these or you have a big fish tank. So that that now would supply the house. All right. Now, we still got to bring in our dirty water and our power, but we're almost there. All right. And you know, and we can push some of this back up in here to get rid of it, but I, I do want some excess because it will save me time in the future. So next what I need to do is I need to install my booster pump and it's gonna go right here. So let me, let me start that process. And I'm actually gonna mount it upside down. The reason I'm mounting it upside down is that keeps my connections. I'm actually gonna move it up over here. So. Let me see if I can. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna try and mount this. And again, this is really something where uh, two people really will make this a lot easier. So that's gonna go there. Luck, it'll stay up there. If my luck is bad, it'll wind up down here. So the whole purpose of the booster pump is to double the pressure. City of Houston, uh, I get 40, 50 PSI here. That will work for our RO system, but your efficiency goes way up, meaning you reject less water. And less rejected water means you use less water, which lowers your cost of operation. So um, that's gotta be secured. Let me get the next thing that goes in here. 
So one of the things I added on this is a pre-filter. And it's important to pay attention to the directions on these because yeah, this this pump should have actually been turned around, but the way I have it installed is the way I want it. It's it's okay. I want it in this orientation. Now, this one comes with adapters to go from three eighths down to a quarter, which is the tubing size that I use in my system. All right, so we'll just pop these in. All right, so this is our inlet, but before we install the inlet, we need to add, I bought a pre-filter for this. And the idea is just to keep any junk in the water system out. So let's see where the inlet is. So this is marked to go in this direction. And this is just a little inexpensive filter that will catch anything big that might mess up my pump. So at this point, we will just pop into here. All right. And then we will go from here. I don't think that's not long enough. So let me go get, and I have some older tubing that's long enough, but I'm gonna cut the ends off of it so I can make sure I get a good clean uh, connection. All right, so that, at this point, I'm plumbed up out here. So the water comes in, goes through a pre-filter, goes through the pump, gets boosted, that's in, that's out. Then it goes to the in inlet of 10 mil, five mil, uh, or five micron carbon reverse osmosis. There's a split for semi-purified water here where um, it can either go to deionizing di for the tank or it can go to uh, the house. And I really need to probably put uh, a set of one-way valves here uh, or one-way here. Now I need to be in each of these so that I don't have water migrating between the two. Okay, so it's time to wire in the system. And normally you would put the power supply out here, but I don't have power out here, so I'm bringing the power to the pump, so I'm gonna cut the connector off. Just is what it is. And then I'm gonna strip these little wires. These are nice uh, tinned wires. I mean, this Aquatec stuff's really nice. They do a great job on this. So that gives me my two wires. It's AC, so it doesn't really matter which way it goes. Now, I know this looks like speaker wire. It's not, it's recycled. Um, so we're gonna pull these apart. And sometimes you can't get them to come apart. You can cut them apart with a pair of uh, nippers like this. and I like to twist the ends together and then we'll come up here and make a good mechanical connection on each one so by a good mechanical connection I mean that I'm going to twist the wires together and then I'm going to add a wire nut over here now if you're just running this for household use like I am right now you do not have to fire up your booster pump in fact it's probably better to leave it off all right 
So let me get a couple zip ties and clean this up. I want to zip tie there and there so there's no stress on the wire. Be right back. That's good enough at this point. It doesn't need anything more. I am going to come back and put some electrical tape around that because uh, this is an outdoor installation. One of the advantages to being outside is it is, uh, if it leaks, it's just not going to ruin anything. Not that aquarium systems ever leak. No, never. Never often. Anyway. So here's that electrical tape. Nothing magical here, just it's just to keep things from coming loose on their own. So we're done out here. So the next thing I need to do is hook the tubes up. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run wastewater over to the sink. So I'm gonna start on that. And this is why, this is actually the primary reason I did, I pulled the direction I did. I didn't want to have to use a splice on any of my tubing if I can avoid it. So first things first, I gotta draw the end and unkink everything. Um, this is not the, um, well, this is turning into a hot mess. So this tubing's kind of inexpensive. Um, it does do a good job of this though. So, whatever. All right. Now, I don't have a lot of really good options here, so I'm going to take the least bad. least bad at this point is to pull it through uh, several of the things. It's really important to make sure it does not go up there kinked because if it does it's going to cause problems. Let me just check that make sure that none of this is jacked up. We'll leave it a little bit of slack and we're good to go. So it's gonna share space with my uh, existing plumbing. 
Um, you know, I'm sure if somebody wanted to be a smart ass, they could look up in code and find where I'm not really doing something the way code would say, say but code doesn't really talk to aquariums. Um, and the reality is if it leaks, it leaks. Now, the hard part is gonna be getting down on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole and then I'm gonna look for it on the other side. Um, okay, so the easiest thing to do is to stick a mirror in here. And actually, you know what? I take that back. I'm going to stick a screwdriver up through there because the mirror is going to take me forever to find. So let me find a long, skinny screwdriver. I don't even know if that's going to work. Let's see if I can get my head up here. No, I cannot get my head up here. I'll be right back. I'm going to get a bigger mirror. All right, so I've got a bigger mirror. I can't see a fucking thing. So I'm going to look for it on the other side over here.
So it's in this area somewhere. And the next thing I need is light. So I'm going to add a lot of light. There we go. Know if you guys can see oh shit I had it so close All right, I need a bigger ladder. I, I can't, it's, I'm having trouble getting the angle I need. So let me grab a ladder that's taller and I'll be right back. So not only do I need a bigger ladder, but I also need it closer. Damn it. go first try all right let me go grab it from the other side and with any luck it'll just pull through and my luck sucks it'll be right down on this side with me I think that went pretty smoothly. And hopefully, and yeah, hopefully you guys saw something. So let me show you what the setup was. I was using this ladder 
reaching up over that spot. And that takes us out here. Uh, let me find the snipper. To this sink. So now we're gonna route this down here and just let it hang over the edge of the sink. If I wanted this to catch, it wouldn't. So. I think that's just fine right there. So I'm gonna get some zip ties and I'll be right back. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to uh, connect the different uh, lines for source water, uh, reverse osmosis water, and deionized water. So let me see if I can get the camera up in here where you all can see it. I think the panel box will make a nice place to mount that. All right, so where is... Product water. product water is right here and we're going to disconnect it and then we'll bring this in through the same process. actually shorten this how we can eliminate that so we had a 90 in there that we don't need so we'll take that and put that there let me grab my cutters This is extra. Let's see where that goes. All right, so I got another. Let me see. Should have something else. So I have another aquarium line up in here, or I have an aquarium line that I need to pull back through. And it's the same sort of situation. Uh, I'm not gonna trim that any. This is our deionized line.
and this is for makeup water. That's, that's where deionized water primarily goes. Now, I'm leaving some extra on here because it will also get used for fresh water to make salt. All right, so that can just hang out up there for the moment. And at this point, we need to connect the fresh water. All right, so we're almost there. And that really is why I prefer this type of clamp. It just does a great job. So I think that's where it's gonna get installed. And that looks pretty good. So, at this point, we are in. Now, we still gotta deal with power. And we gotta figure out where we're gonna pick up power. And then we, so let me kind of look around up here. this one go all right so that's that what's this all right so we got an extra one up here <clears throat> it's actually a strong zip tie So I had extra power supply from a Netgear um, router that doesn't exist anymore. And it was killed in a lightning strike, so I'm gonna just throw that whole thing away. But that opens up an opportunity for this to go up there. Now I gotta figure out how this gets wired. This is the power supply for it. So that needs to go over there for sure. Oh, the strong one, it needs to go the other way. All right. So we forgot to water, wire in the pressure switch. Now, if I remember correctly, the way this was set up was that when the pressure switch tripped, it triggered the pump. trust that that's grabbing enough but I guess all 
Um, and then we should have this. For whatever reason, this is particularly difficult to separate. There it goes. get some wire nuts I'll be right back okay the beautiful thing is this is AC so it doesn't really matter which one goes where they'll all do the job So I think I hear the pump running, and if that's the case, it's definitely time to put some water on. I do, I do, all right. So let's get this water on the road. So first we gotta turn this off, and then we got a valve over here that needs to be turned off. I do feel like maybe I'm Junkie Joe, but whatever. It's just it's what it is. All right. So up here is a cutoff valve. All right. So, what we need to do now is open this and this. Actually, I thought I saw some pressure there. So, I don't see any water flowing in. So let me go make sure that I don't have something cut off. Oh, I do. I have the water turned off. Uh, there's a second cut off here. Yeah. I know what it should be doing. This 
So we're filling our system still. And we need to run this, let this run for about an hour once it's, it's uh, full. So it tops off at well, we're still losing pressure. I don't know quite why. I wonder if the supply side's the wrong side for that pressure switch. I hadn't had this hooked up in forever. So let me make sure water's coming out the sink over it back. I'm gonna move the um, pressure sensor to the output side because actually I think it's in the wrong spot. So first things first, let's uh, do that. We're going to have some water come out here. There ain't no nice way about it. And one of the things this gives us the ability to do is just unplug everything. Uh, meanwhile, this needs to be wound up. So let me wind that up real fast. Okay, so that can go there, and then this one can go here. Didn't really want a bath, but I'm going to get one. See if I can avoid being shocked and plug this in. All right, let's go see what's going on. I hear the pump running. that's what we want to see. 
so we should have really good pressure because it's boosting us to uh, a little over 90 95 pounds that's going to give us great great bypass rates so yeah we're getting lots of water out this end that has been that's our our brine or reject water and we should be getting good water out the other side not yet almost yes my kitchen's a mess no i don't want to hear about it Hard to believe that's 100 psi, but or even 70 psi. But I guess we just want to get all the nastiness off the um, the membranes. So I believe that's it. We've got a good system working and. It's going to continue to boost the water pressure until um, there's 40 psi in the uh, clean water system. But I got to let it run for a while to break in these membranes. They, they grease them. That's got to be pushed out. And then we want to push out any nastiness that's inside these. These are not going to come online today. I'm not going to pay any attention to them. It just is what it is. So. Thanks for watching. I've got a little bit of cleanup to do here. I've got to get some clamps and mount that, uh, but that's that's. I'm not going to video that. Um, but this concludes bringing the RO system back online and relocating it. Uh, and I'm real happy with uh, the way everything looks. And thanks for watching my video. Remember to subscribe, like, and hit the alert button, which is the little bell icon. And don't forget to check out playlists, which is how I organize my videos.